If Islam is that peaceful, why are they in multiple passages of this Quran? Verses like, find your unbelievers wherever you find them, kill them. If anybody gets out of Islam, if any, Christ, if any Muslim decides to abandon the faith, kill him. If any Muslim finds a Christian somewhere, execute him, exile a person, chase him. Execute him, cut his hands, cut his left hand, cut his right hand, cut his left hand and right leg, and then the right leg and the, the, the left hand, and so on and so forth. It is all over the whole of chapter 2, the whole of chapter 5, the whole of chapter 9 of the Quran, all about finding Muslims and killing. If Islam is that peaceful, why do we find references like it is that people were following before you and I maybe were born? Like 1,400 years ago, 1,200 years ago when Islam started. Why are they finding really, uh, things like hadiths like this as follows? Volume 4, book 52, number 260, where Muhammad said, um, if anybody gets leaves Islam, kill him. The prophet said, if somebody, a Muslim, discards his religion, kill him. Immediately. So it means it's the function of the imam maybe to know who is coming to pray and who is not coming to pray. The imam is just definitely functioning as a spy, looking who is not praying, definitely who is not coming out more to church, to, 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 the, to the mosque, and so on and so forth at the end of the day. We report this person that is no more coming to pray, report this person that is no more practicing Islam, and then at the end of the day, we question him and then we kill him if he decides not to, if he decides to get away from Islam. Muhammad in multiple passages approves killing of people who hurt him. So if anybody hurts you, the only thing you can do is to forgive the person. That's what the Bible teaches us. If somebody hurts you, you can forgive the person. You don't necessarily need to stand and continuously. Like for example, if somebody tries to poison you, you don't even need to go back to your house again, but you pardon the person and you take your distances. That's being careful. Take, you take your distances, you be wise. You take your distances, but you pardon the person. You forgive the person. Because if you don't forgive, you're not going to be forgiven. That's what the Bible says. But look at what somebody here is saying. The prophet, the person whom was being spoken by Allah, telling the Muslims that if somebody uh, hurts him, they have to kill the person. You can read the story for your own. Chapter 5, uh, book, volume number 5, book 59, number 369 of Sariya al-Bukhari. Sariya al-Bukhari. Is Islam a religion of peace? The answer is no. Why? Because in all passages, like almost all chapters of the Quran, we are going to be finding references like chapter 9, verse 5, chapter 2, verse 91, chapter 2, verse 93, 193, sorry, chapter 3, verse 118, chapter 4, verse 75, and 76, chapter 5, verse 33, chapter 8, verse 12, chapter 8, verse 65, chapter 9, verse 73, and 123, Chapter 33, 60 to 62. All these verses are urging Muslims to find the Christians wherever they are and to slaughter them and to behead them and to go for war and to kill themselves and to blow up themselves. All these passages, Allah is the one encouraging Muslims. Allah is telling Jibril to tell Muhammad that, hey, write it down and tell the Muslims to go and die for salvation. Is Islam a religion of peace? My answer is no. Why? Because in Islam, we are going to find the only way for a Muslim to have eternal life. According to the Bible, for a Christian or for anybody who repents of their sins and believes on the Bible, on the gospel, and believes in Jesus Christ, has eternal life. You only need to do one simple thing. You truly believe in Christ. You repent of your sins. You change of your ways. That is, repenting means change of ways. You believe in Jesus Christ. By believing in Jesus Christ, you are accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You are repenting of your sins. And then you trust in Christ for your salvation and you are saved. In Islam, the most secure. In Islam, there is no other way for you to have eternal life except by doing far more good deeds than your bad deeds. But how are you sure that you're going to be having more bad, good deeds than bad deeds? At the end of the day, are you not boastful that you have more good deeds than bad, bad deeds? If you are boastful, then you're going to heaven according to Islam. Then if you're not boastful and then you're just practicing Islam very, very well as it says, then if you are really practicing, 
you have to put into account the killing of Christians, Jews, wherever you find them. Not in the time of war, as you can read by yourself. This is a matter of life and death. This is a matter of eternity. You cannot risk your eternity just because you saw a YouTube video. You saw somebody speaking something. You have to go and read the references for yourself and understand that this thing that is saying here is actually true. And then in Islam, the most secure way for you to have eternal life is either to die as a jihad, die in jihad as Marty, and you have 100% sure certainty you are going straight to heaven. So most times you come out of the comment section of this video and say, no, we are no more doing this thing, we are no more killing people, we are no more killing people today. What about 600 Christians killed every day? What about the Muslim torture Christian to death in these articles? What about Christians that are burned down? Muslims are killing Christians and burning down their churches all over the place. What about Boko Haram in, in part in my country where I'm coming from in Africa? All these things. These are things that are happening now, now, now. And you will see reference of the Quran. For example, volume 5, book 59, number 369 of Sahih al-Bukhari, which is saying that somebody wanted to kill somebody and then came and asked Muhammad that I really want to kill this person, but what, what should I do? And then, can I, he asked Muhammad if he can lie so that he can take that lie as a point of, as they did with Jesus Christ. They went and lied upon on, on, on Jesus Christ that Jesus was just saying stupid things, bad things, bad things, bad things. And then, you know, so you can go and lie. And then when he went and lied, he took that lie as a point of, as a foundation, and then killed the person. And who gave the order? You are perfect. His God gave him the idea. So, you guys are worshipping the false God. You guys are worshipping the false prophet. And you are going to go to where you are going to go and follow him if you do not repent. Look at the slave trader you're worshipping. You guys are following a slave trader. Selling human beings. Selling black slaves all over the place. Do you have black friends? Do you have friends of color? That you yourself, you are of color. Repent of your sins. Get away from Islam. You shall be saved only in Jesus Christ. Stay blessed.